this is me, and this is Harvard's most famous course, CS50. With 1,000 students enrolled in the course every fall, CS50 holds the largest lecture sessions on Harvard's campus. But it's not only popular within campus. Millions upon millions of people worldwide have learned from its course for free. This is because the entire course is published online, allowing aspiring coders from every corner of the globe to join in. And today, I'm going to take you on a journey as I delve into their infamous first lecture, Lecture Zero. Now, what makes Lecture Zero so great is not just their robot dog and giant inflatable ducky. It's also that it introduces the world of coding extremely well. No matter what age you are and how much programming knowledge you have, the lecture provides you with a solid introduction of programming. And it does so through none other than Scratch, which is a visual, block-based coding language for kids. Now, I didn't attend this lecture in person. I'm not a Harvard student, although I've had had the pleasure of visiting Harvard before. Rather, I managed to catch when they were streaming Lecture Zero live on YouTube, and I was able to join in from the comfort of my home. And as a fellow computer science student who's been on Scratch for over 9 years, I knew I had to tune into the lecture and relive the joys of learning Scratch for the first time. But before we begin, this video is sponsored by Gandhi IDE. If you're currently using Scratch or plan on using Scratch, then you have to try out Gandhi IDE. It's a free in-browser extension of Scratch with a ton of additional features to make coding in Scratch simple, limitless, and fun. One of its unique features is that you're able to easily set up real-time online collaboration to make Scratch projects with your friends. You also have a ton of extensions that you can choose from, such as adding cool shake effects to your projects, to using AI to create non-playable characters that you can chat with in-game. So if you're interested in leveling up your Scratch experience, be sure to check out Gandhi IDE's in-browser extension as well as their awesome Discord server where they host monthly Scratch game jams. Link is in the description below. But anyways, back to the video. Now let's take a deeper dive into the lecture itself, taught by Professor David Malin. I'll be focusing on the main portion of the lecture where he talks about Scratch, though it is worth noting that he does talk about other computer science related topics as well. First, Professor Malin explains why he uses Scratch to introduce coding instead of using actual code to introduce coding. There are two main reasons for this. Scratch is visual and also intuitive. Scratch is a platform specifically designed for kids. Core programming concepts are showcased through visually appealing blocks of all different colors separated into different categories which anyone can quickly remember. Writing code is simple. Just drag and drop blocks onto the editor and connect them to other blocks. With as little as just a few clicks and mouse drags, you are able to make a working project. It's no surprise that many kids and teens began their programming journey with Scratch, with the platform boasting over 100 million registered users. It's a true gateway to the world of coding, especially for those with little to no prior experience. Even if you're a college student at Harvard, the best way to fully grasp the concept of coding is to start at square one. And that is exactly what Professor Malin starts everyone off at. Okay, so now we know why Professor Malin introduces his CS50 course with Scratch. Next, he goes on to explain how coding in Scratch actually works by introducing the Scratch editor. There are four different sections of the editor. The blocks, code area, sprites, and project window. When a new project is created, a Scratch cat appears in the middle of the project window, which is a simple XY coordinate plane. To make changes to the project window, you can then choose from any one of the blocks in the categories on the left, and drag it into the code area to use in your project. Professor Malin starts by connecting a say block to a when flag clicked block, joining them together like puzzle pieces. He now has a working piece of Scratch code. In Scratch, connected blocks execute one after another, going from top to bottom, ensuring a logical sequence of operations. Testing code is also easy. Professor Malin clicks the green flag to start the project, effectively running the two blocks of code and commanding the cat to say the infamous first words in coding. Hello world. After Professor Malin introduces to us how to use the Scratch editor, he then raises the important question. What is a block, really? In the way he describes, a block consists of one or two components. The first component, which every block has, is the name of the block, which tells you what the block does. This is the block's function, which conveniently translates to a function in real-world coding. When any block is run, it will carry out a specific action such as making the cat show. This is just like a function in coding. When you run a function, you are going to get the output from that function. The second component of a scratch block is a white bubble. In this bubble, you can type certain values which customizes what the block does. 
For example, you can make your code wait 1 or 5 seconds, or say whatever you want. This white bubble represents a parameter in real-world coding. You can set parameters to customize your functions, just like how you can type in the white bubbles to customize your blocks. This allows you to add more details to your code and make it much more powerful. Functions and parameters, which make up a scratch block, are two crucial components that make up any coding language. Now we know how to use certain functions, but how do we create our own functions? Professor Malin answers this by introducing the idea of abstraction through a special type of scratch block, a bright pink square called a custom block. But before that, we first see some code being put together to make the cat meow repeatedly, which includes a play sound meow and wait one seconds block, along with a repeat loop. However, a compelling question emerges. Why doesn't Scratch have a convenient meow then wait one second block readily available? Why did we have to put together this code ourselves? Well, if Scratch had every single combination of every different block, then the number of blocks you could choose from would be literally infinite. And of course, the number of blocks Scratch has is not infinite, yet we can create super complex and intricate projects in Scratch. So how is this possible? Well, this is where abstraction plays a role, which is represented by custom blocks. In Scratch, there are custom blocks which empower you to create your own blocks by combining several blocks of code into one. You can then use this custom block wherever you want and however many times you want. Once the Scratch editor runs the custom block, it runs all the code you put under the custom block definition. With this feature, you don't have to recreate a certain block pattern over and over again, such as making the cat meow then wait one second in multiple different places in your code. Instead, you can just create your own block and drastically increase the efficiency and simplicity of your code. Abstraction allows you to turn complex stuff into simple patterns, and this is a fundamental concept and feature of many programming languages. Now, taking it one step further, Professor Malin refines the cat's meowing code once again. He eliminates the loop and adds something called a number input to the custom block, representing a stand-in value that you can set whenever you use your custom block. This adds a white bubble to the custom block whenever you use it, making it identical to many of the default scratch blocks. And just like the default scratch blocks, the custom block now has a parameter. With this new addition, Professor Malin makes it so that you're able to set however many times you want the cat to meow whenever you use the custom block, making the code even simpler than before. Instead of the previous custom block making the cat meow once, the new code now allows you to set however many times you want the cat to meow, adding flexibility and removing the need for the loop in the main code. With this groundbreaking addition, Professor Malin highlights the profound lesson in modularity. Modularity is the concept of breaking your program into separate pieces, allowing each function to handle their own task. Now, if you want to add anything related to the cat meowing every one second, you can just simply use the newly created custom block. By adding extra inputs to your custom blocks, you can, just like abstraction, multiply the effectiveness of your code. With several separate pieces of code put together, you are able to get an entire working project. With this core concept, you can write your own code in a powerful way and structure it in a way that makes the most sense to you. In essence, Lecture Zero is not just about Scratch. It's a well-rounded introduction to fundamental programming concepts. Just like how Scratch blocks snap together like puzzle pieces, coding is really just a large, intricate puzzle. Within this puzzle, we have functions and parameters, which are represented by block names and white text bubbles. Moreover, we can introduce abstraction and modularity to our code by creating our own functions and adding our own parameters to them, which are represented by custom blocks and text inputs. This allows our code to be simpler, faster, and more efficient. Once we use these foundational concepts together, we have the ability to truly create whatever we want. Anyways, that about wraps up the popular Lecture Zero from Harvard's infamous CS50 course. Their lectures are live on YouTube every week or so around this time of year, so if you want to tune into their course, you might still be able to catch a live stream. But if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, then be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe too if you haven't already. But anyways, that's it for this video. See ya!